Now in its 10th year, this is GabNet. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, live from Harlem in New York City. It's me. I'm Alex Bennett. And we're here until midnight tonight. That's Chuck Farnham. Yep. You know, and I, and and you mentioned to me, and by the time they see this is gonna be way past that date. But tomorrow is your what, sixty-sixth birthday? No, uh, next week, next Tuesday, I think. Oh, okay. And how old are you going to be? Sixty-six. Sixty-six. Wow. <laughs> and you're surviving everybody. Barely. You know. you know, I'm still an orphan, Alex. That's how bad it is. You're an orphan. But I'm an orphan. What do you I mean? know. I, you know, when my mother it's died. It's weird. Yeah. I find it very strange because I didn't think about it, and then I thought about it, and I thought. This is just weird. Uh, well, I, I, I was, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't talking to you by the time my mother died. Right. And she died at a hundred plus. Okay. And um, so th- that was my big deal. I, all of a sudden, when she died, I, I thought, I, for a moment, I thought, I'm an orphan. Yeah. Did I go it's off? A weird to, feeling. Uh, the, do they send me off to the orphanage now? Yeah, yeah, can we can we get somebody else to take care of me? Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, let me just sit up here. Ah. I don't know, you know, why, but it's it's a weird thing, and I think the whole year is going to be a little weird, and I need a vacation. Yeah. But now I don't want to go anywhere. So. You don't want to go anywhere. I want to go somewhere, but I I just I don't know. You're out in the middle of nowhere where you are. Oh yeah, Fallon, Nevada, ladies and gentlemen. If you yeah. and, and anybody who's listening to me, can you just right now tell me exactly where Fallon, Nevada is? Exactly. Yeah. If you're uh, if you're in the military, you know, but nobody else. Have I ever been to Fallon? No, I don't. How far? Uh, did you oh, ever? What? I don't think you ever went to Mom's house. Maybe. Mm mm. Mm mm. No. 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 Uh, the closest I've probably been to you was the Mustang Ranch. Right, right. Is that it's still, down the road is, away. Is, is that still in business? We were talking about it yesterday, actually. Um, the Mustang yes Ranch no. was a whorehouse. They renamed it. They renamed it. Oh, really? I, I would think that that would be a name you'd want to keep because it's so entrenched. Well, in they the... still sell Mustang Ranch T-shirts, but it's it's down by the Wild Orchid now. The I think Wild Horse, Wild Horse, Wild Horse Ranch. Wild Horse Ranch. Same, uh, same business. So we were talking about people who died. Died. Uh, my friend uh, who owned the, uh, um, what do you call it, the uh, Moonlight Bunny Ranch. Right. Uh, died. Heart attack. Heart, heart attack. And when he yeah. went, I went. Geez, Almighty! You know that's ridiculous. You know. Yeah, he just went out of nowhere. He he. I used uh, to run into I, him every once in a while. Occasionally, I would go to his birthday parties out there. You know. Yeah. And uh, I told you about the time I went to one of his birthday parties, and somebody took a photograph of me, and I wish I had it, but I don't. I they said, "Can we take a picture of you?" And I said, "Sure." And they took a picture of me and two people on either side of me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and one was. You ready for this? On one side of me was Joey Buttafuoco, and on the Joey. other side was what's his name who got his dick cut off. Uh, oh, um, uh, Bobbitt. John, oh, John Wayne Bobbitt. And you know what? There's where the tie-in of this little story goes. What is the hometown of John Wayne Bobbitt? Is it somewhere in Nevada? Fallon, Nevada. Fallon, Nevada. He's a local. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, they do they celebrate his birthday or something every year? Out no, there? but I should no. start. I should start something. 
John Wayne Bobbitt, in case people don't remember, a woman by the name of Lorena Bobbitt, his wife, right. uh, so hated him that while he was sleeping one night, she cut his penis off, then got in the car and drove <laughs> down the road and threw it into a field. Right. And the police were out there in the middle of the night looking through the field and found the penis. Yep. And then they reattached it. So I now I'm in, standing uh, there on either side of me are two of the sleaziest human beings in America. John Wayne uh, Bobbitt, uh, who uh, had his dick cut off, and uh, Joey Buttafuoco, who uh, was the uh, the guy they... Who, what was her name again? Uh, I keep forgetting these things. Oh, yeah. Um, Young girl. Her name, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They went, what did they do wrong? Buttafuoco hit his wife? Was that it? I don't know, but all I know is that he supposedly was charged with having sex with a minor. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And he had been screwing her. You know, he, she'd come over to his car right. repair shop or whatever. I'm trying to remember, what was her name again? God, how the name's... Well, let's see, Lorena Bot... No, jo but a Foucault. Yeah. Joey and... What? I'm blank. See? I'm blank. I got nothing. Uh, let me see here. Let me look up Joey. I could look up Joey Buttafuoco. I don't even have my. Oh, here, you, huh? You want what? a you want a good story that's oh, yeah? in the same vein? Sure. Fo follow this. Mm -hmm. Got a got a place here in town that does um, glass repair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They fix windows and stuff. Yeah. And the lady who runs the place. Um, part of her job is to sexually satisfy the owner. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. She blows start, the owner. Uh, uh, start this again. She, he has a what? It's a glass uh, repair shop. Okay. You know, for like windshields and things like that. Yeah. And the office manager's job, along with being the office manager, is she blows the owner. Oh. That's part of the gig. All right, now she's going to quit. Not because she's doing that, but she's going to be doing something else. Mm -hmm. So she's um, going to hire a replacement, right? Yeah. And and this is all in the paper. She's going to hire a replacement. So she starts interviewing, the interview process, right? Mm -hmm. And she gets these people, and they come in, and so they go, okay, you're going to be the office manager, but you also have to blow the owner. And they, the, this woman agrees to the job, right? No problem. So yeah, in other I'll words, it, 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 you got, does she have to do the books too? Yeah, yeah. Has to do the books. She's, she's a, and blow the guy. And blow the no guy. No problem, right? Week into the job. She wait, comes wait, wait, wait. To begin with, where did you hear this story? Oh, no, no, no. This is... This has happened a mile and a half from my house. And you'll see where I heard about it here in a second. Mm -hmm. So she comes home late from work one night. Mm -hmm. And her husband says, why the hell are you late from work tonight? She goes, well, I had to, I had to blow, you know, what's his name? Mm -hmm. And he's like, what? And she goes, oh, oh, I had to blow, you know, she goes, and the husband is freaking out. He's like, you're not blowing your boss. That's not right. And she goes, no, I have a contract. My job is to do the accounting and blow the guy. It's right there. All. And she <laughs> pulls out the document, right? And he's like, this is never happening again. And, and next morning, he goes down to the glass shop <laughs> with, with his gun. He's going to shoot the owner of the glass shop for... You know, a, con a contractual agreement. And the owner comes out with a pistol, because everybody here has got a gun, and shoots the guy in the leg, right? Now the cops all show up, and they're going to get the owner of the glass shop for attempted murder, is what they're going to do, because he's the only one who got a shot off, right? Mm -hmm. Whole thing goes to court in town. Front page of the paper. Whole thing... And and he got off with self-defense. And and the uh, 
judge said the guy had done nothing wrong. There was a contract between this woman. Oh no, 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 no! Woman. That doesn't. You can't write. You can't sign somebody to a contract to do something that is illegal, basically. Well, it's not illegal. She was all, maybe she was only getting paid for the the um, book job, you know. Well, not but, the but, hand but in job. order to keep her job, she by contract had to blow the owner. That was part of the skill set that she needed. If you sign the document, I think you're in. Okay. I mean, I. I mean, if you hired me to clean your windows and give you a hand job, am I? Is that wrong? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, apparently, not in Nevada. Because he completely got off, and he shot this kind of leg quite nicely. So bas- well. basically, the guy, the guy who owned the glass shop, got off for shooting the other guy in the leg. Yeah, they said the other guy was, you know, going down there to, you know, this is hurt his, him for. Wait, wait a minute, this is his wife, right? Am I correct yeah. about this? Welcome to small town politics. Yeah. So I mean. I would think he had every right to go over there, not necessarily with a gun, but to confront the guy about him contractually um, getting his wife to agree to give him blowjobs. Well, apparently there was a screaming match out front of the place, and the guy brought out the contract said she agreed to do this. Here's what the job entails. She agreed to do it. I, there's nothing I, you know, I can't help you. You talk to her about this, not me. And what judge? What judge would say that you have to contractually obligate somebody to have oral sex with you? I mean, it just makes no sense at all. Well, I think that's where you go. Maybe in a Trump you know, world, but not in a regular legal world. I know? mean, it doesn't sound normal, but it certainly was around here. Well, I it's, just don't think that because she signed a contract uh, to do that, that it, it it's, it's legally binding. I don't know. It probably isn't, but that's not what he was on trial for. He wasn't on trial for contractually agreeing to get a blowjob from the woman. He was on trial for shooting the guy in the leg. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. America, what a country. I mean, it's weird. It's strange. Well, yeah. Dude, I can take you all over town, and weird and strange happens every couple of blocks. And you'll find it. Yeah, well, it'll find me. You know, you're, 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 you're the one that will always come up with these stories. I love that story. When that was showing up in the paper, I was so happy. It was just like, oh, my God, this guy is, I'm like, is he going to get off? Is he isn't going to get off? Well, that does, get off does that beat the story with the guy with the killer, the killer piano in San Francisco? Uh, it's right up there. The killer piano, in case people don't know what we're talking about, there was a place, uh, Carol Dota, who was the first woman ever to get her breasts enhanced, okay, Yep. Uh, had a club. And what was the name of the club? It was The Condor. The Condor. And uh, a late one night, one of the guys who worked there uh, and a one of the strippers there, they, there was this piano that used to come down from the ceiling. Carol would be on it. Her dressing yeah, room she was, was above it the was piano. It was on the uh, floor above. And then she would get on yeah. the piano, and the piano would come down, and she would start dancing. Okay? And it was kind yeah. of a flat piano. It didn't have legs on it. So that right. it could you know, like get right all the way, you know, miss the ceiling and so on. And it's after hours, and now this guy who works there and this stripper who works there decide they're going to have some fun, right? Yep. So, so he throws her down on the stage, right? And then he starts eating her out, plowing away. And in a moment of, of passion. She <laughs> kicks her foot and it hits the lever. Yep. That makes the piano start coming down. Well, no, no, they were on the piano. No, they weren't on the piano. Well, they died going up. Oh, I thought he died going oh, they down. Were, they were stuck all night, dead. 
Wait, wait, wait a minute. I thought the piano the came down while he was going down on her, and no, then no, no. he smothered himself. Other direction. She got smothered because the piano hit the roof, and he was on top of her. But she didn't get smothered. She didn't die. No, no, he died. He died. She was, but she had to lay there all night until they showed up in the morning. With his head in her, found with, him. with his head in her muff. Right. Yep. And, Classic San Francisco. Yeah, I, it, but I thought it was corner of Broadway and Columbus. I always thought it was that the, the piano came down while yeah, no, down it went there. up. They were laying on the piano because it was the end of the night. The piano went down, end of the night, and it went up and crushed him into her. Classic. And he was he was stuck in her crotch all night until they came and got all him. night until they came. The guys came to open up in the morning and found the two of them mounted to the roof, so to speak. Now, my question is, I wonder if she ever had sex again. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. But the guy... go to the place in there. The guy died, and he was he was married. Oh, yeah. And somebody had to go tell the wife, your husband died. How did he die? And then they had to explain to them, explain to her that he, uh, well... Did your husband have a mustache and beard? No. Yeah. Well, he does now. He does now. <laughs> I think I think that was a joke yeah. I pulled on the air when we told the story. Not yeah. as not yeah. as graphically as we just did. As we just saw with it. It was a winter corner of uh, Columbus and uh, Broadway, I think. Wow. Wow. I love that place. Yeah. The place next door was good too. I was just looking at your hand. What did, what, it's all bandaged up there. Why? What? Hold your hand. I missed that. You, you bandaged your hand. Why? Oh, oh, this? Yes, that. Um, apparently, I got something called trigger finger, where <laughs> if I bend my finger a certain way, it makes a popping and it hurts. So the longer I leave the Band-Aid on, the longer it doesn't hurt. Oh, okay. I've discovered. So that's what I'm doing here. Have you gone to a doctor about this who might be able to actually fix it for you? No, my doctor left town. So I'm currently without a GP guy. Well, go find another so GP. Find another GP. Yeah, you, can get, you can get antibiotics down at the horse and uh, feed lot. You don't really need, you know. Have you gone and gotten antibiotics as a horse and feed lot? I, my mom did. Many times. Oh boy, you know the, your your family and you are so weird. I, 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 you know, I think you were the we're, kind we're of hillbilly. guy my mother warned me against hanging out with. Hey, hey, I loved hanging out with your mom. She yeah. was great. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a little weird. I, I admit, I'm. A little weird. A little? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you can't see it, it from in here. Was, what happened was you finally made a profession out of being weird. Yeah, without really trying. Without really trying, but you, you made it, you know, you, you, you... I made it okay. Yeah. Now everybody goes, you know, yeah, we, we like the way you are. And I'm like, I don't know from inside that I'm that weird. Hmm. It doesn't come, it doesn't, you know... Well, you certainly like you know your whole whole thing about uh, literally collecting uh, serial killers as friends, right? You know, uh, how many did you I, know? You know, uh, the maybe uh, all the I guess all the big ones, the Night Stalker, Ramirez. Yeah, Richard. Yeah, he's a great. He's a very nice man. Now, wait a I, minute. Wait a minute. He was the Night Stalker. He went around killing women. I think it was. He, yeah, but why did he do it? I think he was a. <laughs> he was a, cranky. No, like, well, no. I think he was a product of his environment. How he grew up is how he ended up. And even when he got into prison, I mean, all the gangs in prison were using him as a drug mule because um, you know he'd get a lot of visitors and they could bring stuff in. Well, and he talked to me about it, and I said, Richard, you need to stop hanging out with those guys. They're not going to make things better for you. And he goes, I know, Chuck. I don't I don't know what to do. And I go, just say no. 
But he's the, next, the Night Stalker. You know, you yeah, get this name. You get said, this no, you name, gotta, the Night fashion. Stalker. You must. You have to be very proud of that and use that to terrorize other people. Not when you're in jail. Well, he was just he was just Richard to me. He was, he was just Night, not Night Stalker. Huh? <laughs> Richard, he was Richard, and you know, and then they, the, of course, the. Uh, the penal system says he died of natural causes. He's like 35 years old, dies of natural causes. Who believes that? Yeah. Certainly not me. Yeah. Yeah. I saw him many, many, many times. And, you know, he, oh, he, he drew me a really nice photo of, of a guy stabbing Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> it's kind of nice. <laughs> I mean, oh, and his... He, he uh, traced his hand and put a pentagram in the middle of it. Hmm. Hmm. I got crap. What can I say? You still have that stuff? Uh, <laughs> like I throw something away? No. He's no, but here. I mean, you could go on. You could go on. Uh, you know, eBay and sell it. You can't sell serial killer memorabilia on eBay. Really? Yeah, they won't let you. Really? Mm. -mm. Well, that's being judgmental. I thought so. Yeah. I got a bunch of stuff. I got letters from uh, um, Charlie Manson and Son of Sam and Manuel Noriega sent me a Christmas card. <laughs> Where from? Prison in uh, in Florida? Yes. Is he still there? No, no. He got out. And then he moved him to Europe somewhere where he was also convicted of something, and he died over there. Oh, okay. Well, at least he got to travel. It was really good when you, when you addressed something to Manuel Noriega, dear general. And he, he sent me back this thing, and he put four little stars under his name, and happy holidays. Wow. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. You just once you get the addresses flowing, it's open season. <laughs> you just start writing. Well, did I tell you it was weird, folks? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah well, Maybe. I mean, no, it's a hobby, right? Maybe. I don't know. You turned it into a profession, though. You really <laughs> kind of, yeah. I wanted to see how far I could go, and I determined that it was uh, Well, in all those infinite. years I didn't speak to you, which had to be, what, about 20 years, something like that? Maybe. What did you do for a living? Well, I was working at the airport. Yeah. Doing conflict resolution. Yeah. <laughs> I did, um, let's see, I was at um, uh, uh, Excited, Excite.com. Mm -hmm. Excited Home. And um, at home networks, uh, and then a, a CD recording facility. And I, oh, and I taught at um, uh, what was the name of that college? Uh, Hard uh, Knocks. I can't think of the Hard Knocks. Huh? Hard Knocks. No, no, it was a real college. School of um, Hard Knocks. Um, yeah. I can't believe they gave me a teaching credential, but they did. Um, what was it? Anyways, it was in San Jose. I taught at a college. Because you were you were supporting yourself and a child as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, you did. I wish they had Uber then. I would have just done Uber, I think. Mm -hmm. so, well, I think you, Uber is a good job. You managed to survive all those years. That's good. No, no, I had plenty of money. That wasn't a problem. Yeah. I have skills, yeah. weird as they may be, but I do have some skills. Yeah, yeah. But when you were young... And we're running out of time here, so make it fast. When you were young and you were growing up, what did you want to be? Oh, see, I only went to um, the guidance counselor once. And I, I kind of wanted to be a farmer. But my dad was in the Air Force, so I said I was going to, I thought maybe the Air Force was good for me. I didn't realize that my dad was in the Air Force because he had a choice of being in the Air Force or going to jail. So... Really? You know, what did your father do? Uh, for a living? No, to or, get him get him. In, that in I have not been able to figure out yet. Oh, really? That piece of knowledge is not around. Wow. You've tried. I, I do have. know that my grandmother threw away all 
the military clothing and stuff that he had. Mm. There was no record of that anywhere. Wow. That's I'll work on that. Yeah, I'm sure you will. So we have about a minute left. Uh, are you playing anywhere? Oh, not, no, no, you're not a comedian. I just, I just like here that. at the house, Alex. Just there at the house in Fallon, Nevada. I'll be, yeah, I'll do. I can do a tight five here at the house. They're real entertained yeah. by that. If, if you want to, when you're dr- driving by Fallon, Nevada, you should drop in and see Chuck. Oh yeah, no. If you're definitely in the Reno area, you yeah. know, drop me a line and I can show you where to eat. Yeah. Right, and uh, he's a good tour guide of of Fallon. Yeah, Nevada no, we got we got um, uh, nuclear um, explosion stuff out here. We got petroglyphs. Wow. I can take you out by the um, the base. Wow, be exciting! Anyway, we have Chinese food. What? We have Chinese food. Okay. Oh, that's good. Fallon, Nevada, the garden spot of Nevada. Exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the garden spot of Nevada in person in the name of Chuck Farnham. Thank you, Chuck, for talking to us today. Any Anytime, Al. Chuck Farnham. Now in its 10th year, this is Gavin. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, let me just bring up my picture. Okay, there we go. Hello, how how are you, everybody? Uh, I had, uh, maybe it was a little distorted there. I don't know. I I can't figure out if it was distorted or not. But that was a, uh, I had to do a special thing on that uh, video because it went out of sync really bad. And so I had to somehow edit it back into sync. And uh, now it's okay now. Oh, okay. I guess we're all right. Anyway, uh, so uh, let me see here. We um, do we have anybody? I'm I, today. I'm really tired. I don't know why. I'm just all day. I I don't know. And I just uh, just uh, laid in bed all day and kind of dozed in and dozed out. And ah, geez, I'm just getting to be an old fart. You know, it's getting to be ridiculous. It really is. Anyway, we got air conditioning going on here because it's gotten hot again. Oh, boy. Mm. Mm. So, anyway, let me just, uh, let me see here. We have two people here. Just two people. Oh, okay. Well, what the hell? Let's let's do it anyway. Uh, Let's uh, bring these people in. And uh, there's uh, Alan. Thank you for being with us, Alan. Hello. And Brian Neary. Hello, Brian. Brian. How you doing? My brother. How you doing, Brian? Hello. Can you hear me, Brian? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. We can hear you. Turn yourself up just a little bit. Now he's frozen. Go up. Now he's frozen. Okay. Anyway. Oh, my God. Listening to you and Chuck Farnham is always strange. <laughs> he was, I, you know, I, I, I sort of caught a part where he was friends with serial killers, including the Night Stalker. Yeah, yeah. So, like, pen pals were actually met them in person. Oh, met them in person. I don't buy it. What do you mean? Not, you... Richard, not Richard Ramirez. Wait a minute. You don't buy it? I know it for a fact. Really? Yes. Where? Did, where? Where? I, would, in, I know. I know San, a little bit about the case. He went to where? visit him in San Quentin on any number of occasions. Huh. Okay. First, we had a friend there, who's on death row, and his name was the Dean, and uh, we uh, we uh, um, um, got wow. to know Dean, and he got to know Dean, and then he went out to see Dean, and then he got to know uh, Richard Ramirez as a result of that, and he got to know a few more people out on death row. It was a hobby. I, I guess I didn't realize that non-family or non-lawyers can actually go visit people oh, on absolutely. death row. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I went out there with uh, Lori Thompson to see uh, this guy, Dean. Yeah. Okay. Learn learn something new just every long, day. Just as long as he says he wants to see you, you know. Yeah. Well. Sure. Yeah. Does so somebody want to see Alan? 
Huh? Is it an old friend? No. <laughs> no. No, but no you friend. see, yeah, yeah, another thing you're wrong about. Drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We may start the new drinking game with you, you know. Uh, yeah, well, that's, uh, it's news to me that you could just go out there and visit somebody, so. Well, no, you, but you can. Okay. Yeah. You know, I mean. I'll, if, I'll, I'll look it up afterwards. I'll look up visitors and what's required to be a visitor. Well, it's no, a, I, I, you have to, I think you have to be requested by the person that oh, you okay. want to see, however. I, I, these people knew you from the air, I take it. This guy, he got to know me from the radio, and he called my program all the time. Cool. And so then uh, Lori and I went out to see him one day. Uh, and um, it's funny, I ate... <laughs> I, Lori, Lori's just a, such a gem. She got yep. all dressed up for the occasion. She got d dressed up in a dress that could only be... <sighs> Described as a sausage casing, <laughs> and uh, uh, if you've ever been out to a prison, you wear a sausage casing dress out to a prison, and you've got a lot of people staring at you. Sure. Okay. So she got to go in wearing the sausage casing. I don't know how she managed to do it. Meanwhile, I was wearing a pair of jeans, and they said you can't wear jeans. So they had that's me. That's because all the inmates are wearing jeans. Yeah, that's right. So they had me put on a pair of white pants that they had, and it, it had. I didn't look at it until later, but it had a, a giant lipstick mark. Lips on on the on the crotch. But they gave me this to wear inside, and I'm going. She gets to wear that, and I can't wear this. You know, yeah. no, you can't because you they know. don't want to confuse you. Right. I didn't want to stay there forever. So. No, I don't think you know. so. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so how you doing, Brian? Doing good. Doing good. This you're not working this week, right? <clears throat> Yeah, two weeks off. Yeah, I went to uh, Monterey for a car week for the last yeah. few days and may go back, uh, what's today? Today's Thursday? Maybe go back tomorrow night for yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because you didn't yeah, call You didn't call, nice. You didn't didn't call. call last night, and I figured it was because of car week. No, but I listened to Alan's show last uh, on the way home today. Alan's show? Alan's show? Yeah. Alan's show. <laughs> <laughs> Are we being facetious? I can hear the audience laughing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, so, yeah, Monterey Car Week, so it starts, uh, well, it starts, uh, like, the week before, but actually they kick off on Tuesday-ish, and they have all events going all over, so it's everything from new exotic hypercars, like Koenigsegg, and uh, some really, really, you know, special multi-million dollar cars yeah uh to then you have like you know 1930s mercedes limousines and stuff like that mm -hmm. um, so it's really a big spectrum of cars so yeah so it's really really cool to see so yeah so today tuesday was a show wednesday i went to they have like a show at the monterey jet center with uh, airplanes and cars so some of my friends had cars over there and then uh Thursday today this morning they had the tour so for the um the tour the the was the conquest at the elegance the big show on Sunday mm -hmm. they have you can get extra points if you drive this tour so they start at Pebble Beach and there's probably about 50 or 60 cars and then they drive they leave there and they go like uh um, 17 mile drive they yeah no 17 mile drive yeah yeah, and then they come back, and um, yeah, so it's cool to see all the cars again, and then they get to start up, and they leave, and so they drive in front of us. So it's pretty cool, yeah. Wow, wow. And so you yeah, just get a lot of fun. And what do you do? You're looking at a lot of different cars, right? Yeah, just cars nonstop and walking nonstop, and yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Yeah, So, and you're a big car fan, so. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. So some of my McLaren friends were there, and the, some of my custom friends were there. So it was, it's a nice mix of all my friends. So. Yeah. Oh, Especially good. Party good. last night. Good, good, good. So you take off a couple of weeks for that, or is that just a week? I, just, I take off this week for that, because then I don't know what I'm going to do down there, if I'm going to stay down there or come back home and then go back. And then next week I'm going, yeah, next week I'm going to Vegas for a couple of days. So. Going to Vegas? Yeah, my friend, a couple of my friends live over there, so it'd be nice to get away for a few days. They live there? Yeah. So you don't have to book into a hotel or anything, right? Uh, no, we still do, but I booked this hotel. I think I told you, uh, so my friends, my, there's like, so the guys and girls and they, they want to go see Bruno Mars. So we're going to go see Bruno Mars and then dinner and dinner and stuff like that. And then, but we booked this like three months ago and all the rooms were really, really cheap. And I'm not saying at Hard Rock, staying at a different hotel, but the hotel, they had like suites, huge, the suites, panoramic suites with the views for really cheap for three days. So uh, I got one of those like months ago. So. What's really cheap? Well, What's really cheap? It was $1,000 for the two nights. Oh, that's not bad. And how many rooms is it? Uh, this is, uh, I think there's two rooms in that suite. And then that they have a the huge, The most expensive huge, Motel uh, 6 that you've ever stayed at. Then they have huge uh, main room, and that's where they have like the panoramic view of the of the. Oh, it's a hot. It's a Planet Hollywood. Planet Hollywood. Planet Hollywood. Oh, yeah, that, I understand. A, that's a nice so, hotel. Yeah. So so yeah. It's like new. I said, uh, booking uh, months ahead is uh, well worth it. To save a lot of money. Wow. Mm. Okay. All right. Five hundred and nine. How more, many? How many, many of you in the room? More money for cocaine and hookers. So that's always good. How many? How many people can? How many rooms are there in the in the suite? I think there's two. I think there's two rooms. Oh, okay. So that if two of you do it, then it's uh, it's five hundred dollars a night. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not bad, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they charge you for everything up there anyway. So <laughs> they charge you for everything. Yeah, you know, tipping is like you know just getting around and everything. So. Yeah. Yeah. Are you driving or flying? Flying. You taking a private, semi-private aircraft? No. They 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 no, fly they had a lot it. of those. They had a lot of those last night at this jet center party. A lot of the air. They had the they had a couple of old old planes like the war planes, and then they had these jets. And you could look in them and check them out, and you could talk to them. I don't know if they're talking about renting them or if they're talking about purchasing them. But there's a lot, there's so many people, like, important, like, high-end people, I guess, there. So, yeah, they had dogs searching around for bombs, I guess. I don't know what they're doing. So, yeah. And you, well, there's, like, a, there's a jet center in, I'm going to say Concord, that will take you round trip to, to and, and, the, and they, they it's, a, it's a company, and, they, mm -hmm. and the plane seats six or eight people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's about double the price of a first class flight. Like nobody would fly first class, but it's about $600 each way or something like yeah. that. But it's a private jet. You don't have to go through TSA security and all this other stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's really cool. I have a friend of mine that flies to Vegas all the time on business mm -hmm. and just gets walks out to the, the aircraft and they fly them. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of tech guys do that. They fly, you know, Google even has their own jet center in, uh, in San Jose wow. Airport. Um, but yeah, they have a big building there. But yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of people that do that. I hear it advertised all the time. I'm surprised you didn't negotiate that saying that you would go back to San Jose, that you've got to have a jet available <laughs> to you at any time you needed it. No. No. Well, I don't know that you want to have a, oh, did I have a jet? No. No, yes, we did have a jet. Right. I my friends uh, at that uh, what was at that time, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, New Tech oh, uh, yeah. decided that because they were in Topeka, uh, they didn't want to have to always go all the way out over to St. Louis to get a plane and stuff. So they they they, I guess they bought their own plane. Mm. It was a jet. 
And so they flew into, uh, into, into San Francisco, and they call me up, and they go, hey, we, we're going to go down to uh, Monterey and have dinner. We're going to fly yeah. down, so why don't you meet us at the airport, and we'll pick you up. So I go in, they got their own jet. Oh, this is cool, you know. I mean, you're sitting in that jet. I can... I could even hold my my uh, suitcase up, uh, you know, my uh, I didn't have a suitcase, but it's uh, what do you call it? A briefcase. briefcase. I could hold it over my head while we were taking off, and nobody was going to stop me, you know. But anyway, we yeah, they, they have a lot of huh? they have a lot of a lot of car auctions going on also all week, and then uh, I went today to one of the auctions outside at the golf course, but. Um, I've gone there like Thursday. I've gone there like on Fridays and Saturdays, like Fridays you walk through and all you see are just jets coming in, just nonstop, these small jets coming in, dropping. Yeah. Well, anyway, what happened was, so they said, you know, just, just meet us there. We'll go down, we'll have dinner and then we'll get you back by 10 o'clock at night and you can go to sleep and do your show in the morning. And I figure that's always cool because what can you say? You say, what'd you do last night, Alex? Well, I got in a jet and we flew down to Bonneray. We had dinner and we came back. So we go down and we land and uh, they have a limousine to pick us up and take us to this really nice restaurant down there. Can't remember what the name of it was now, but it was quite well known. Sardine Factory? And we No, and we went and had, uh, had uh, dinner. Uh, and uh, we go back to the plane and all of a sudden, they notice this big, giant patch of oil under the plane. And it turns out that the plane had some kind of massive leakage of oil. And, of course, they're not going to let it take off, right? Right. So they had to go get limousines to take us all the way back to San Francisco. And I didn't get home till 2 in the morning. Okay. Oh. So when people said, what did you do last night? I went, don't even ask. <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't even ask. So a friend of mine that's a former military pilot flies for Hewlett Packard. They own a fleet of, of jets and they fly the executives around and they, they have like six uh, jets sitting out here in San Jose airport. And once in a while, they'll need to fly a document why they don't like fax it or something, but they'll have a document, they'll roll it up, put it in the tube, hand it to him. He'll go to the airport and fly it to, to Dallas or something, hand it off to somebody else and turn around and fly back. And when they don't have executives on board, if he's the only one, sometimes I would go with him. I've been with him in a number of years, but um, it's pretty amazing, those little jets, how how quick they can get up in altitude. It's uh, they're, yeah. they're pretty fast going up. Okay, we're impressed. Yeah, you know, I'm not impressed. It's just it was fun to do. These these things are like they cost like six thousand dollars an hour to fly these between maintenance, fuel, the pilot, and everything. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. No yeah. wonder my HP stock is. Usually have a pilot and a co-pilot too. Yeah, well, I sat in the co-pilot seat. Yeah, it, I... a, you only need certain routes. You only need one person, a pilot. But certainly, if you go over water, you need to have a co-pilot, too, or something. But in between here and Texas, there was no water. So. Oh, really? Well, I mean, yeah, but in between the Bay Area, and I mean, you fly over the Bay, but we wouldn't do that. It was The aircraft was, was based in San Jose. Mm -hmm. You just park near the jet center, and you go there, and they, they own, like, six jets for the, for, you know, because their headquarters are here. And they, you know, they hand him the documents. He shows up. He says, come on, we're taking this one. He unlocks the door. We get in. He goes to a checklist, gets on the radio with the air traffic controllers, tells them the plan. And, you know, within 15 minutes, we're in the air. Mm. Wow. Wow. Well, okay. It, it's fun. I, I've done it four or five times. There's not a, most of the time he has executives with him and there's no way he could sneak me in. Little old me. So... Okay, and that's your story, and you're sticking to it? It is. Oh, okay. The most unusual flight I ever took, though, was I had a friend who had just gotten his license, and he had a small plane he could rent. And he calls me up. This is in New York. And he says, uh, why, don't you, uh, why don't you meet me out at, uh, out at Teterboro Airport that's out in New Jersey? Meet me out in Teterboro. 
and we'll get in this little plane and we'll go up. We'll go out to uh, uh, what's that island out in? Uh, oh, jeez, I'm trying to remember the name of the island now. Martha's Vineyard. No, 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 no. no. It's just between uh, 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 Long Island and uh, 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 where do you call it? Oh, no idea. God. Right and 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 no Rhode idea. Island and Rhode Island. Uh, it's a small little island. Block Come Island. On, Jeff. Block Island. That's the name of it. Block oh. Island. So, so let's go out to Block Island. We'll go have some dinner, and then we'll get in the plane, come back, and then, you know, we'll be back here by 10 o'clock. We'll go over to Max's Kansas City when everybody asks us what we did. You know, we can tell them, we, hey, we just flew out to Block Island for dinner and came back. So now we fly out there, okay, and we land. And we go out, and we we get a car to pick us up uh, out there. <laughs> oh, boy. Mute your mic. Boy. Oh. You didn't even have time to mute your mic. Usually you're I did, good. I did, I did, I did. Tonight that Alex Bennett dies halfway through the show. Oh, boy. Uh, anyway. You okay? Oh, there now there goes Jeff. I guess it's catchy. Yeah, I do that all the time. Anyway, so anyway, so we so we land, we hit go, and we have dinner, and then we get back, take the take a, a car back to the plane, and he goes to the plane, and he sticks the key in the in the door, and the key breaks off. Oops. Now, he can open the door because, you know, just by putting the key in there, the other half of the key is still in there, so we could open the door and get in it. But now what do we do to start the plane? And we don't know what to do, and it's like 10 o'clock at night or whatever. Uh, And so one thing leads to another, and we have, excuse me, i got to blow my nose. Hold on. And he muted himself. No, I, yeah, I muted myself. Anyway, so we figure, oh, well, we can't do anything about it because it's late at night and there's nobody here who can fix the plane or fix the key or do whatever's got to be done. And uh, he, uh, we, we book a room and we stay overnight. And we wake up the next morning and now it rain is coming down like you wouldn't believe it. Right? Now, this is that little trip we were going to take to Block Island to have dinner so we could tell everybody that guess what we did tonight? We flew out to Block Island and had dinner. And finally, we get somebody at a... Uh, uh, it's The rain starts letting up, and we get somebody who fixes airplanes because there are people there that do, deal with airplanes. And he comes out to the plane, and he goes, Well, you know, you don't need a key to start these. And we, we said, well, what is, what is that about, you know? And they said, no, all you have to do is you just uh, uh, have to hotwire. In other words, where you would hotwire something with a plane, you don't have to hotwire it. You have to separate two wires. Mm. In other words, it's a thing called a magneto or something. So if you take that and you separate the two wires, the plane immediately starts, the ignition starts up. So he does that, and then he tapes the, the, the ends of that together, and he says, okay, you're good to go. So we took off, and all we're praying is that somehow these two things don't get together because then the plane will stop. So we flew on a, on a really a Jimmy rigged plane all the way to Rhode Island, and we just left the plane and told the people who owned it Here's where it is. And we took a train back to New York. And 24 hours later, I'm back in New York. And, of course, when people said, what did you do last night? I went, forget it. You know, I don't even want to tell the story, you know. So that's my plain story. Anyway. uh, We've never had a problem. That's interesting. Well, let's a, a jet you has a different maintenance schedule, I guess, or something. They get higher up and you know pressurized, and so they got to be scrutinized. I guess I I don't know much about it. 
I, I, but I, I think they're more scrutinized than a, just a prop. Oh, there, you know something. I know guys who are like like real stoners, who are also pilots, and when it came time to uh, to pilot a plane, yeah. they became so straight and narrow you couldn't believe it. Well, you know, I mean. Uh, they yeah. would stop smoking dope hours before they were supposed to do this, you know, so their head would be straight. And then they're checking everything before they're taking off. There's a whole cha you know, checklist you do, especially <laughs> when you're doing like one of those. This was a two-seater plane, the one we took out to Block Island. And those things are, that, that's the most fun flying you can do. That's flying, you know. I don't, I don't know. know. I like the two-seater. You remember the, yeah. remember the man show? Remember the man show? Yeah, I remember the man show. and Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Remember when they used to do the drunk pilots? No. They 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 imitated drunk pilots and they're like they on the luggage like flying in and they, and they're pretend like they're drunk before they're going on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, anyway, so I don't know. I have nothing to talk about tonight. Do you have anything to talk about? Well, I guess there was my answer. I can. Hmm? I can. Uh, what were we, what, what we going to say, Jeff? I. I you know, uh, Jeff, you're bre you're breaking up on us a little bit there, you know. But then again, you're you're in Maine, aren't you? Are you still in Maine? Hmm. Jeff. Get home on separate. What? Oh, uh, I think is what he said. Yeah, yeah, it, it, we've got problem with your signal, Jeff. Um, see, you're breaking up on us. Like, Do they have internet in Maine yet? <laughs> Boy, hey, anybody else want to call us tonight, or can I call this thing off early? <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Uh, you know, Brian, are you going to, if you go back to the car show, are you going to, are you looking to buy or just to have fun? Uh, oh, yeah, your, your customer support's right behind you. Is that Pam? Oh, yeah. It, yeah well, she just, your customer you. support just walked out of the <laughs> house there. So. <laughs> I, I almost put a bit on a 1933 Cadillac LaSalle today, but nice. they started going up too high. Yeah. Wow. How much How much did it go for eventually? I uh, don't know because it didn't hit the reserves. So it, went, it was up at 50000 <laughs> but, but I was cheap, I guess. I only wanted to spend like 30 on it. It was nice, but... What was the reserve yeah, on really, What was the reserve nothing on Nothing really... Uh, it's just crazy all the the money that goes down there and the cars that are down there because you know like mclaren's mclaren but then you have all these special edition mclaren and stuff like that that are there and you know like i said there's there's four million dollar cars driving by you down down there and uh just wait a crazy. minute there's four million dollar mclarens there was there's like a bunch. There was a bunch of two million dollar McLaren Sennas Holy cruising around. But there was an Apollo there, which is like I don't know how many million that car is. And you go to like some of the like Spanish Bay and Pebble Beach, like Spanish Bay. They just had a bunch of cars in the front there, just all lined up, and they're all multi million dollar cars. So this is like the biggest show in the world. Everybody goes to this. And it's right here in Carmel, so it's so nice to. Be so close, been so spoiled, gone to it like for 15, 15 years, I think. And is everything for sale or, or are people just there to show off their cars? Uh, a lot of companies are there to show off. And then um, there's a lot of auctions going on all over. Yeah. And then there's some big events that they unveil some new, some new concept cars and stuff like that. So listen, yeah. we were talking about, we were talking about uh, private jets. Does your company have any private jets? No, Dan and her may our, our parent company may, but not ours. Yeah, because yeah. if we like, I'm supposed. To, they asked me to go to Sweden again next week, but I'm not going. But but if we go, we go first class because it's over eight hours, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Sweden, so 
Well, that's some of the neatest ride I had recently, a couple weeks ago, was a friend of mine has a Ferrari uh, 812 super fast. Mm -hmm. And this thing cost well over a million bucks, too. So he's leasing it. I didn't know you could lease Ferraris. <clears throat> of course, you can lease anything. He's a Ferrari nut and. What do you mean? What do you mean? You didn't think you could it for a year what? instead of buying the damn thing? Can you can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. Oh, okay. Uh, what what do you mean? You you didn't think you could lease Ferraris? You can lease any car. I I well I don't know. I just kind of went over my head. I didn't realize that you could lease an expensive car like that. Oh yeah. Like you could only buy them or whatever, but he's. He says the damn car is like eight hundred and ninety thousand dollars plus tax and all the other stuff comes close to a million bucks. And he said, I didn't want to spend that on the car, so I leased it for a year. Well, I think I've mentioned this on the show before. The most, uh, uh, what, what can I call it? The most expensive car uh, uh, that I've ever uh, driven in, uh, ridden in. That was also the most uncomfortable was a, a Lamborghini El Diablo. Yeah. Well, which is yeah. what, about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Maybe more than that. Yeah, I don't know how much they were when they were new, but they're still up there. <laughs> Lamborghinis hold their value pretty well. Really? McLaren's don't. Ferraris do, Lamborghinis do, <laughs> but McLaren their 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 companies in such back and forth with selling it and, and support and everything so people get worried so they've hopped out of them but they're this, a great great car this ferrari was easy to get into i think i made some new uh, disco dance moves trying to get out of the damn thing <laughs> you know 300 pounds trying to get out of a racing seat a recaro racing seat isn't pretty <laughs> so well, I mean, this Lamborghini was the most uncomfortable car I've ever yeah. ridden in in my life. Well, I got offered, somebody offered to let me sit in their McLaren, but I didn't see a crane around to get me back out of the damn thing. We, 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 knew, we knew Alan could get in my car, but we didn't know how we were going to get him out. That's right. <laughs> so Alan chose the wise thing and didn't get in the car. Oh, okay. So you've seen, his, a, and you've seen his McLaren. Yeah. Yeah. There's a video of an old man getting out of like a Lamborghini or something, and when he rolls out of it, he's like on the ground and like, you know, rolls out from the ground from the floor. So I said, the first time I touch the ground when I'm getting out of that car, I'm selling it. Oh, really? Well, you're lucky. You're probably, well, of course, I know I've seen you, but you're, I'm sure, a lot more flexible than I am. But you know what the thing that I'm afraid of is, same thing with my stepfather was when we took the keys away from him. You know, my dad, my stepfather Part was a car start. guy. And I know, you know, I'm 57, something like that, 56, 57. So I'm like, you know, I don't know how many more years I'm going to drive. And then, geez, if I only have like 10 more years or 10 more years of driving, geez, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I seem to think about it. But Jeff gets chauffeured everywhere, I'm sure. Ham drives them around in their Prius. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What? What? Is, is some? Is, is there a problem here or something? What? Wait, I know this. Oh, Jeff's having this, issues. Jeff, you've else. got real problems. No, I know. Well, it's not going to work. Just listen to you guys. Huh? That we heard. <laughs> At least I did. Mm. But, yeah. I know, but nobody else does. <laughs> well, well, anyway. I don't see you actually moving your lips, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Probably a very slow connection, Signature. very bad connection. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, now they, I saw, right, I saw right them, by the ocean. So, yeah. I, I see some, um, 
some video today of like Kamala going down the stairs of the Air Force, Air, Air Force One or whatever. And then they're like, <laughs> it's empty tarmac. And then what they're doing is they're saying, oh, they say, oh, here was the, you know, and it's people are just forwarding this stuff like crazy without looking or researching. But they're showing it, and then they like, bzz, 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 and then they zap in the crowd cheering for Kamala, you know, like a full crowd on an empty tarmac. And I don't know what the ex, the real video, original video was supposed to be, but then here they are saying, "Oh, this is AI," you know. And I think this is this is when the problem we're going to start having with AI is. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold on. Let, let's back off here, because a couple of days ago, Donald Trump was claiming that at the tarmac, it was all AI. Yeah. But it wasn't. But it was. I know. But it was real saying, people. That, that, so what, what they, were, they were doing that today? They're, they're showing a video of it, and then they, they take away, or they, they had an empty tarmac, and then they zap, they, they show that, oh, here's the video. Then they show, like, the crowd, you know, but they showed originally was an empty tarmac. And I said, this is the problem where AI is coming in now is, you know, now no matter what people do, they're gonna e either if that if some if a scenario is true, like it was a full tarmac with people cheering, mm -hmm. the P the doubters Trump side is gonna say, oh, that was empty, and they're gonna do a video showing that it was an empty tarmac by using by using all computer generated stuff. Really, and this is yeah. gonna be the thing where these everybody's just pointing at, at those things, mm -hmm. and we're not seeing any of the you know the any of the main issues coming through anymore. And it's just this bickering back and forth of, oh, your crowd and my crowd and back and forth. Who cares about the crowd size? Actually, nobody cares about the crowd size. But uh, the de Republicans are saying to, to Trump, will you quit complaining about crowd size? You know, and start talking about some issues. This is not looking good. And Trump has said, screw you. I'm going to keep doing what I want to do. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. The election's over with already. You know, I mean, he's it's like he's trying to blow the election. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, it just seems like he goes, he goes to his, he's reading the, you know, reading the teleprompter. And then you can tell when he starts making that pivot and just starts that whole recycling of all those stupid arguments, you know, over you and know over. You know, he's going to claim it was stolen from him again. Well, of course, of course, you know, um, I, I doubt if there are a lot of people, not there aren't, aren't going to be many people who are going to attack the, the, uh, the Capitol again, however, they're not going to go for that one. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll meet you down at the Capitol. Yeah, sure. You will. You lying sack of yeah. crap, you know, no, no. That, and then I was watching the Fox News because I was at the gym and I could see the Fox News going and they keep going over and over again about Walsh, you know, saying that he was he was higher, I guess, ranked than he actually was or something. And this is going way back. And then they say, oh, we're not talking. We're not disputing his military record. We're we're talking about his embellished lies. And it's just going back to. You know, this is an important stuff. They're not talking stuff. about any of the issues at all. It, no yeah. issues are being talked about at all. This is an important stuff. Okay. To begin with, he said that in 2018, and he may have misspoken because he was really meaning something else when he was trying to say something else. You know, it was a, nothing important. But what they're doing is they're going back and listening to every word he ever said, and then they're writing it down, and, oh, he said this, and he said that. Here's a guy, I got to tell you, here's a guy who spent most of his life very honorable. Yep. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, uh, is certainly a guy whose record is to be respected uh, and honored. Uh, and why can't you just say, hey, you know, good for you. You got yourself a good uh, vice presidential candidate. He has a great uh, history. Uh, we welcome him to the race and whatever. No, you can't do that. You got to start saying, "Oh, he didn't say this, and he wasn't this, and he wasn't that." The guy spent 24 years in the National Guard for crying out loud. 
What do, what do you want him to spend another three days in the National Guard so he can be shipped off somewhere? So he needs to meet with the National Guard, you know, have a huge crowd of all National Guard people and say, by the way, Trump and these guys don't think that your service is honorable. So I guess you know who you're going to vote for. Well, no, but you got this guy, what's his name, uh, uh, the uh, uh, J.D. Vance, uh, who was in the Marines. Big fucking deal. Big fucking deal. So you were in the Marines. You only were in the Marines for how many years was he in there? Four. He only, only, he only attained the rank of corporal, not command sergeant major like 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 uh, Waltz. Yeah, yeah. Big yeah. difference in rank. Absolutely. E four versus E nine. There's some problem tonight with our with our Zoom. It's glitching yeah, a little we're bit. Getting flashes, huh? Yeah, it's yeah, glitching. It's just, yeah, it's just me. Huh? It's Jeff's I thought it was just Well, my you're side. glitching, and then when you glitch, I glitch. But nobody at the bottom glitches. Well, I see Jeff glitching a little bit, but, but Brian's the only one that's clear. Yeah. But usually mine's terrible. Yeah, mine's okay. Mine, but mine's okay, but I don't know. I mean, it could be you glitch, and then it causes my glitch, and I don't know. When are you going yeah, somebody... to back to San Jose, Brian? Huh? When are you, when you moving back to San know. Jose? Maybe January. Oh, okay. Uh, somebody mentioned on the chat, and yeah, I saw us too. Uh, Greg Kinn passed away. What? Greg Kinn passed away. Really? Yeah, yeah, I saw oh, it on there. I thought it was old, but yeah, they, they said it on here too. What did yeah. he die from? 75. Wow. I, I'm not sure, but they said uh, 75 Ooh, years old. old. I knew Greg quite well, actually. Yeah. Did he play at the Breakfast with Bennett's or anything? I don't know if he ever played at a Breakfast with Bennett, but he certainly did my show on many an occasion. Yeah. And yeah. then he himself went into radio. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, it's amazing. I wonder why, you know, I often wanted to ask Greg this. Guy uh, goes out, has one massive hit after another. I mean, he had like, what, four or five hits, one right after yeah. the other? Jeopardy and uh, yeah, and yeah, there are quite a few, awesome. quite a few, and then all of a sudden, no more hits. Mm -hmm. You know what happened? You know. So I remember you used to you used to bring this up on the show a long time ago about some of these these bands that get together and they they've been together for ten years until they have a hit because they've been working on this album for ten years. And then all of a sudden that hit came from that 10 years of work. And then all of a sudden they're allowed another year to get another album out. And then they're trying to rush something and they don't have that, you know, that. Well, I mean, like, for instance, I'll years. give you another guy. One hit right after another. Boom, 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 boom. Huey Lewis. Oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden nothing. Boom. Hmm. Well, why does that happen? Maybe he got tired of going out and making hits. I don't know, but I don't know how you can get tired of making hits. Mm -hmm. You know, the more hits you got, the more money there is in the bank, for crying out loud. You know? Yeah, did you see the that documentary they had on We Are the World? Yeah. Yeah, Huey Lewis was on that. It was pretty good. Yeah. But, you know, he can't sing anymore. Right, right. <laughs> because he had this uh, t bad tintinitis or whatever. And he can't uh, he can't uh, be in a band, hear a band. It just will drive his tinnitus. hearing it, tinnitus. Hearing. But it's it's something worse than that. You wow, know? his ears? Is it in his ears? Yeah. yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I I don't. Chuck Farnham listened to the show. Go to a doctor. They give you a little injection of cortisone. Goodbye, trigger finger. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was going to say that. I couldn't say it while he was on, but I was going to say it earlier. I forgot. You know, I, it's going to wear a bandage around it. It's not going to help. So, there you go. Well, no, I get, I get uh, cortisone. I get trigger and... finger, too. And, and, and I just got my wrist injected yesterday for a carpal tunnel, just okay. like you do, right? No. I thought you got uh, cortisone injection. Yeah, I get it in my, in my hand here for arthritis. Oh, okay. Yeah. Works and good, and huh? I got it in my knee because I fell, and then I got uh, a, a, what do you call it, a, uh, uh, 
Oh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, a a um, what's the thing where you you you? Uh, oh God. Oh, I can't remember now. Ah, forget it. Okay. It's a knee thing. It's the thing I had in my knee. And uh, um, yeah, uh, if, you're. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm talking. Same thing about. I did too. You know uh, what do you call it? Where you overextend. Uh, one of your uh, joints and uh, I can't pulled up, uh, pulled uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, yeah. I had to, I had to, I had to get the shots in my leg, and and then I took another fall, and it started bothering me again. So I had to get shots again. I had to get the about two of those, but now it doesn't seem to really bother me that much anymore. Good. So Good. you know, welcome to our, our 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 part of our program where we talk about our medical problems. Yeah, but neither you or I, who usually can remember these things, can remember the names tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I mean, I had the uh, uh, the uh, 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 Tormeniscus. That's right. That's I had the same thing. Got it. Yeah. Got a cortisone injection, and a day later, it felt a lot better. Well, but mine felt a hundred percent better, like I didn't have it. You know, but then yeah. after about three months, four months, it comes back again. So you get another shot, and then I got another shot, and now I. I don't really feel bad anymore. It feels okay. You know, occasionally it, it aches a little, but, you know, no problem. And I'm going to go get my hand done again because it's starting to hurt a little bit. But, yeah. You know. Well, because yeah. Marjorie's hand is hurting her a lot, and she wants to go to the doctor and get it done, so we go together to the same doctor and just <laughs> book dual appointments so we, you know. Cool. Get a like shot. two for one shots or something. They have those two for ones. Yeah, it's a little bargain he's got. Come on in, get a shot for you, and then bring your wife and get a shot for her. You know, and we'll charge you three times the amount. Well, I signed up. I'm going to be having a meeting on the thirtieth uh, to go to PT for my uh, for my neuropathy. So, yeah, well, I hate physical, the idea. Physical training. Mm -hmm. Alex Bennett does jumping jacks. Well, no, and I just. What is the? Hmm? Is it just actually just moving your legs back and forth, getting circulation through there? Is that what the? I PT don't know is? what they're gonna do. I, hmm. I don't know if it even is gonna help. Okay. Hmm. Uh, the thing I hate about PT is is that, okay, so I'm going to go get PT. All right, so do all the things you're going to do. Make me flex, make me do this, uh, uh, do some massaging down there, uh, whatever's got to be done. And then they say, and now go home and do this. Well, wait a minute. I don't want to go home and do anything. I just want to have come here. You do whatever you got to do, you know. Right. That's the way physical therapy is. They do a little bit in the office, and they give you a list of a million things. What am things I paying them for? I'm doing all the work. That's right. And they, I don't they like give you the either. rubber bands, you know, those rubber bands to do. They yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, the, the rubber door band door thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't know what they can do about this neuropathy. But, you know, maybe they can, you know. People? It, when is the feeling not there? Is it when you're lying down, or is it all the time? Because neuropathy is like the numbness of your feet, right? Yeah, my feet are always numb. Huh. Uh, some people have pins and needles for neuropathy. Well, I have a little bit of pins and needles, but it's basically it's uh, it's just numb. You know, the gabapentin didn't work, or progabalin. Well, progabalin helps. You know, without it, I'm I'm it's it gets painful. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know, but I take the progabalin and it makes me dizzy all the time. So that's fine. You know, it's wonderful. Yeah, right. They figure. Yeah, they figure. We'll we'll give the old man these things because he's 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 getting old and he can take it. You know, <laughs> I'm figuring at this point in my life, why not try heroin? You know what? Sure, what, what could, how could it hurt? You know, I got enough money in the bank to take care of a hero, good heroin habit for the rest of my life. <laughs> can you start a little bit lower, like maybe some? Ecstasy or something, and you work your way. Yeah, work, up. work your way up. Yeah. Funny how yeah. Brian knows the pharmacology of the street drugs. <clears throat> well, we all know the there's drugs. some things that open your mind very well. Well, no, I, yeah. I, you know, we, we, I guess you did your share of drugs, didn't you, uh, Brian? Yes, I did party drugs though. 
Yeah, well, party drugs and they were fun. Well, party drugs are what? I, 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 MDMA. Um, long, acid, long, 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 long time ago. Uh, ecstasy and uh, ketamine. Ketamine was my fun. Ecstasy, was I thought, was a lot of fun. And okay. according to doctors I talked to, it's not dangerous. Yeah, you just have to make sure you have water. You're, you're, yeah, you don't you're want to get dehydrated. dehydrated. Yeah. But I thought yeah, ketamine kids. was horse tranquilizer. No, yeah, ke ketamine's ketamine is a different yeah. story. Well, that's, that's what killed, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy from Friends. Oh, was it? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Matthew Perry. Today they were saying they arrested his ketamine uh, people. Oh, really? Yeah, they did, oh, arrested a doctor and a woman known as the ketamine queen. Oh, wow. And uh, then there were some other people that were involved in it. His, his uh, assistant injected him with it. So they wow. they charged him with that. Sure. And it was ketamine. But Jeez. but supposedly ketamine is kind of not really a, a drug that kills you. Unless, I guess, no. maybe. Huh? No, but if they're injecting that stuff, that's we, we would dry it and then you snort it. And that gets your, you know, the best filter system in the world going up there. Mm -hmm. and, and you know how that is, you know, with the drip and, and it's like perfectly dosed to you. And it, it, the worst thing you would do is you, you know, like I said, you have some outer body experiences and mm -hmm. it was a fun drug. But it's funny because you could have stuff from, you know, because what it is, right, the liquid is for the brain surgery, right? So it sort of numbs the brain. Right. So, um, so we would have stuff from pharmacists like connection that was like for human stuff that was really really smooth and you can go in and out it's really smooth but then you had stuff and you had like uh, on the bottle before we would dry it you have little little mm -hmm. uh, animals <laughs> they have animals <laughs> pictures and i would always say which one is this one is this one for the horse or the pig or is this for the elephant because i really need to know that before we start to make this stuff well, I, uh, you know, I, I had a girlfriend who, who turned me on to uh, ecstasy. And what a wonderful little drug that is, you know, and it's supposedly not dangerous. It's not, on the street, they call it the love drug. Yeah. It yeah. makes you. Yeah, but I'd be really afraid. Sex with them. I'd everybody. be afraid to do with kids now, with, you know, when they're cutting stuff with, you know, with. Uh, Fentanyl. You know, so, well, that's, so ecstasy, that's, the, right? that's the problem today. Yeah, so yeah. ecstasy back when I used to do it, the worst thing that they would do is cut it with some caffeine or some things, right? So not that bad. but Or you know, fiberglass, and then you can't stop it. No, 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 I'm not that far back. But then uh, but then now, yeah, now my friend who, he and I used to party all the time together when we were younger, and it's like, man, we're like, geez, these kids now, they, they start, you know, they're cutting it with all this other stuff uh with uh what do you call it opioids or whatever and it's like no. man i wouldn't trust anything anymore yeah. no they say be very careful about doing well with fentanyl it takes two micrograms can kill a grown man micrograms not milligrams yeah very small yeah that glitching seems you really to be heavy. gotta know what you're it, doing that glitching seems to be heavier on your side than on my side it seems an allen right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, uh, I don't think I'd be glitching if he weren't glitching. So, yeah. uh, lucky. Well, that's because we're both Jewish. Yeah, I guess. I but guess. Alex, you do gummies, right? I, I haven't done gummies, but I heard that's like just really just like nice and mellow. And you know something? I don't like ingestibles uh, for pot. And talking about pot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gummies for pot. Um, as an old person, I use gummies for vitamins. But anyway. Um, so you don't want to mix them up. By the and way, laxatives. I just you ordered. I, did, I ordered something, and I, we had it last night, and it was great. I don't know if you ever tried these. There's a company called Chocolate, uh, Chocolate dot com, <laughs> and you can go there and order gummies, chocolate coated. Oh, are they good? Oh man. No. There's no Adrian. drug in it. It's just a gummy it's with. It's just a gummy, gummy with. It's a gummy oh, covered with just great. really great chocolate. Oh, Adrian would cool. try to make s'mores with it. I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> do we have chocolate for s'mores? Yeah. I Maybe mean, interesting for us to do it, but I don't know for her. 
Yeah. So anyway, so how how else are things going with you, Brian? Everything uh, copacetic? Yeah, everything's good. Yeah. I yeah, like how, I, how we have to really talk good. around. I think in um, December and January, January will be really good. I think I'll move down. I'm, I'm going to probably sell this house and move down to San Jose again, that area. And um, yeah, so... You know, our company's closing in Sunnyvale. And so I sort of have an option to take a big package and or or work up in Lodi. And so I, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm uh, I want to take that that distance anymore from my daughter. So I think uh, my daughter and I talked about it before, before I moved up and everything was fine and talked to you every night and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, the distance is just sometimes during the week, I know that she's not doing much at home. So I'd rather grab her and go grab something to eat or something. So yeah, being a little too far from her right now. So I think probably in December, I'll, I'll do that. I may take this package from my company and 20 years is good on my resume. Oh, 20 years is good. And it's a big package. So I may do that and then just find another job in San Jose. So yeah. So yeah. I'll make all those decisions in December, between now and December. But isn't it amazing how a lot of the decisions you're making in your life now are based upon your daughter? Yeah. Well, and that's the mistake I made. And then I, I listened to a lot of podcasts, and uh, that's one decision I, that I, I didn't make correct is I moved up here for my work, mm -hmm. and I shouldn't have done that. Should have probably stayed in San Jose, and then. Yeah. So, yeah. But now it's like now it's based on my daughter because that's going to be over 10 years. You know, even if I go to another company, maybe it's only for 10 more years and I retire. So, yeah. 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 And uh, then my daughter breaks my heart and moves away from me. Well, no, your daughter's <laughs> going to break your heart when she hits 10 and you have to leave her off a block from school. <laughs> you know, no, not her. No. Huh? Oh, no. She gets mad when I go like my car stuff without her. She gets upset. Really? Oh. Yeah. She wants to go. And is I she, say, is she possessive about your time? Yes. Yes. Well, yes. you know, I'm I'm envious of you. Okay. Because l look at what you got going here. You know, you're 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 what in your mid fifties now. Something and, like and, that. And, and, and you got a kid, you know? And, and you don't you love that kid like like nothing going. And she she adores you, I can tell that. Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, but, but like we talk about all this, you know, fun stuff with fun things. And I wasn't ready for a kid before, for sure. But now that I did all that stuff, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a fun, fun party life and fun young life. So, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't have done it earlier. I, I, yeah. You don't feel like you partying know. anymore? No way. Partying is like you guys and, and I'm up till nine and ready to go to bed. You know, that. I can't <laughs> say I was ever a partier. You know? What are you talking about? Huh? You went to party, right? All the time. No, I wasn't a big partier. I mean, when you're talking about parties, you're talking about, you know, going, going to party, out, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah, no, I was a player. There's no question about that, you know. But that didn't mean that I partied a lot. You know, partying is going out and getting stoned and, you know, yeah. going crazy. If I got stoned, I usually got stoned at home. I never got stoned at, at, at some party somewhere, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, that, that's when we, were, we had these, like, drug stories, especially with ketamine, and people would start out, well, yeah, well, one time when I was at a club, and we're like, <laughs> right, right when they start a story like that, one night I was at a club, and they're doing a the drug story, it's like, oh, no, this is going to end bad. <laughs> wow. Alan was there busting the party. So. You know, we've got just, what, four people here with me, and there are more people watching now than usually watch this program. There are 46 <laughs> people watching 40. right now. Yeah. 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 And, you know, you all could have joined us tonight. Yeah, you could yeah. have, but hey, maybe they just enjoyed the people I got here tonight, okay? So, what the hell? If you can hear it, the theme's there, and uh, we're, uh, we're getting out of here. 
Uh, thank you so much to uh, Alan for having joined us tonight. Thank you very much, Jeff, for joining us as well. And Brian, nice hearing. Uh, tonight's been car talk, folks. That's what it's been. Car and drugs. <laughs> car, car and, and drugs. Yeah, things like that. Be responsible. Anyway, everybody, uh, thank you so much for being with me tonight. I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll, I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, and... Uh, 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 we'll, we'll get a citizen panel back here again tomorrow night. Okay, there's one coming up right now with uh, Amy Manuel. She's next over most of the same GabNet. She'll be here taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Skype at GabNet Live. I will see you again, uh, when is it? Tomorrow night. Yeah, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Good night.